It's been so long since I last felt this way So much 
has changed and made my world today. I don't believe it, just can't explain it. This easy feeling has just changed. Lieutenant, how's it going? Good, how you doing, Bob? Good, thank you. Just as I hoped. His real name is Fred O'Connor. He lives in Brooklyn. He has a secret apartment with another cop. There's something gentle about him. Something almost maternal, despite his tough guy act. I don't give a fuck about your ideas. I want you working with homicide. I don't want you guys going out alone. Hello. Sorry for the delay, you know, this is bad time. So the lieutenant will see you now. Would be any problem, Mr. Fredrickson, just... No, I don't think so. Sal, you do me a favor, she wants to take some photos. You take her around? Oh, thank you. Hi. I want any fucking heroics. I want every undercover covered 100%. Okay, Lieutenant. Okay, Luke. Come in. Hello, Lenore. Hello. How are you? Not doing so badly, O'Connor. And yourself? Fine, right, thank you. Tell me something. Why aren't you interviewing Bob? You're the real thing. Bob's not. When did you discover that? Before you married him or after? First question. Why do you think all the victims are from the drug squad? <clears throat> Perhaps because the kids and the crazies don't like us. And why all with a bread knife? Maybe they cut better. Come on, you're not going to tell me that there is no corruption among New York's finest. You know who's really killing those guys, don't you? Who? You are. You. And all your friends in the press. All you people who are so compassionate for everything that's weak, sick, or degenerate. You're the enemy of order. You're the one who kills cops. You're nuts, O'Connor. 
Yeah? That's what you told me five years ago. That's what attracted you to me, isn't it? Mr. Stevens, there was someone here looking for you. For me? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Said he'd be back later. Well, I don't want to be disturbed. I'm not home to anyone. Yes, sir. cookies lying around. I wouldn't need a cleaning woman. You noticed anyone hanging around outside recently? No. Why? Why? I saw the north today. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we had the interview. How'd it go? All right. She's not exactly Miss Easy Street, you know. <laughs> you telling me? You don't think she's discovered anything, do you? Oh, geez. What's with you today? New York City Police Department spokesman Arthur A. Barnes. Did you turn that down? Press speculation that the killer and the recent rash of murders of narcotics division detectives. What'd you do? Connected with a what? The beard. Oh, you don't like it? Fred? Yeah. I've been thinking. A killing? Yeah. You don't think it is a cop, do you? You're almost as bad as the law. Next you'll be telling me we're corrupt. Oh, we're not? Well, now we buy this place. <laughs> you are as bad as the law. What's that supposed to mean? It's the banning of drugs that's killing us. It's the banning of drugs. That's corrupt. Or oh, is that the way it is? Don't give me that condescending bullshit, Bob. I don't like it. Listen, I went to see your real estate agent. You know what we can get for this place? About $400,000, so? So, I think we ought to sell it. Sell it? Yeah. You're out of your mind. Look, Fred, it's been four years. When I first came here, I thought it'd be an investment. Not anymore. Now, every time I come here, I feel... Look, I don't know what I feel. Don't kid yourself. You bought it so you'd have something to feel guilty about. I'm not selling. Then buy me out. I don't have $200,000. Just give me what I put into it, okay? I'll think about it. Okay. You do that. Where are you going with that? Oh, Mr. Stevens, there's somebody down here asking for you. I told you I wasn't home to anyone. When was that, sir? A couple of hours ago. You got no memory? A couple of hours ago, someone else was on duty, sir. Well, I'm telling you now, I'm not home to anyone. Is that clear? He's gone, sir. I told him you weren't to be disturbed. What'd he look like? Strange kind of a guy. 
Dark glasses, hat pulled down. You know. <laughs> Probably sent a spy on me by my ex-wife. And if he comes back? Just tell him I'm going to live here Sorry about before. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Detective Kane, deceased at least two hours ago as a result of blood loss. It looks like he's been cut with a serrated edge knife. Is it the same as the other ones? Well, it's very similar to all the other ones. Detective Francis Kane of the New York City Narcotics Squad is the latest victim in the brutal series of mysterious murders which have rocked the Big Apple to its core. Kane's body was discovered at the corner of 38th Street and 11th Avenue, the cause of death being a deep gash inflicted on his throat by the killer. Next to the body, a particularly disturbing factor in this case, was found a badge identical to those commonly issued to police detectives. At this point, the theory, already expounded widely in the press, that behind the slings of the policemen lies an explosion of internal conflict in upper echelons of the police department in contact with organized crime is more than ever in the air. Police Department spokesman Arthur E. Barnes has refused to comment on the accusations of corruption advanced by several papers. Hey, I uh, say a cop did it. Dropped this badge. What do you think, Lieutenant? You sell papers and you believe the press. Lieutenant O'Connor, I want you to follow the taxi on your right.
who are you? May I come in? I said, who are you? went to visit a friend who just moved into a place over in Central Park West, and I think it's near ours. Yeah, you better be careful. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you at the precinct. What? So, how are you, Lieutenant O'Connor? How do you know my name? Who the hell are you? Me. Put him up. How'd you manage to get past the doorman? I slipped past while he was helping someone into a cab. What's your name? Fred. Like you. Fred Mason. You couldn't be the cop killer. Why have you been following me? I've been looking for someone special. You're special, aren't you, O'Connor? How'd you find out about this place? I've been following you for six months. The first time I saw you, I knew I could confess to you. You're not a killer. You're a psycho. You're a fucking psycho. Them. You wouldn't be able to. Maybe it wasn't me. Maybe it was the other part of me. Bullshit. Excuse me? That's a bullshit. Me, not me. Who do you think you're fucking around with? Are you all right, O'Connor? Am I all right? Move it. Just gonna be in the other room. If I hear a sound out of you, a sound, your history. How you doing? Hey, what are you doing? All right, I wanna make an inquiry. Mason. Fred. Fred. Yeah. Date of birth unknown. About 20 male white. It's no hitting that inquiry, Fred. Right. All kind of Bob there. Bob just took a couple of hours off. Mm hmm. Something about his uh, mother being sick. That's what he said. Who is he? What's he told you? I can only talk to you. Some weirdo. You know who he thinks he is? No, don't tell him. He thinks he's the cop killer. Can you believe it? Can you? Look at him! Hey, what's he doing here? Why don't you let him go? Yeah, so we go tell every... 
Come here. Let me talk to you. Come here. Where were you yesterday? What? Where were you? Gosh, does it matter where I was yesterday? What's going on here? I don't know. Well, you don't have to worry. It's me, the son of a bitch, Martha, not you. What do you mean oh. I don't have to worry? What's going on? What are we going to do? I'll find a solution. Let me work on it. I don't believe this. How did he get here? He was following me, Bob. I don't know. Just like that, he was following you. I don't know. The guy's got some kind of fixation on me. I don't know what. He's in love with me. He's a fucking nut. Look, I'm going to stay here. Now, we're going to find something to do. You're going to get him nervous. Oh, give Christ. me a couple. Of, give me some time alone with him. I'll call you at the precinct. No. Come on. I'll call you at the precinct. Come on. Come on. Who knows you're here, Fred? No one. You got a family? My parents are dead. You British? I'm as American as you are. Don't give me any shit. I was just brought up in England. Watson? If I let you go, would you tell anyone about this place? Perhaps. I have perhaps. to Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of answer is perhaps? Don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you. It's not nice. I don't want to hurt you, you know? I, I don't want you to hurt me either. So I'd like you to just walk out of here now and just forget you ever saw me. You ever heard, knew my name and knew about this place. What do you say? I have to piss. You can piss in your pants, you mutt. <laughs> You get scared now, huh? You scared now? You're not the cop killer anymore? Come here. What are you doing? No! Come here, you fucking mutt. <laughs> you still the cop killer? Huh? This is the way we treat cop killers, Fred. I let you go, will you tell anyone about this place? Hey, they... You want me to kill you? You want me to kill you? I don't want to hurt you. Don't make me hurt you. Is he? Is he still there? Listen, is that why you called? Just to find out how the hell he is? How the hell do you think I am? Okay, okay, calm down, all right? I want to come over. I want to talk to you. No, not here. Well, listen, about your share. That's okay, I'll buy it. If he talks? What if he goes around telling people? At first, you're all concerned about him, and then when I tell you I've let him go, you start complaining. What did you want me to do, kill him? He won't talk. He was just some faggot who was following me. So what now? now I'm just going to stay away from the apartment for a little bit. That's all. Put that away somewhere, will you? Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
something to drink. We're thinking about buying. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Listen, uh, that kid. You never saw him again, did you? Nah. You know, maybe you ought to get yourself a place out in the country. Me? Mm -hmm. I hate the country. as hell in here. Keep your clothes off if you have. You got five minutes. What a shame, isn't it? Good-looking guy like you locked up in the bathroom. Get you like rock music, don't you? I get you like rock music, don't you? I asked you a question. You want to ask your fucking question? You like rock music, don't you? Peg. You're a peg. Peg. I said you're a peg.
But you're mine now. And you'll do exactly what I say from now on. Exactly. Take your time and have a good look around. Community Hospital to Mrs. Anthony Murray. If we need a lot of hard work. Oh, some. Sure. But if we get a loan from the bank? Why? I've got enough money. It is just... Uh, I don't know. Let's think about it a bit more. Turn that back to the station. You just had it on. Sure. Twenty-two years ago, young Leo Smith got himself into the papers by being born when his father, now deceased, eloped at the age of 19 with an English showgirl who claimed to be the daughter of a duke, but who, it was later discovered, was the child of a bus driver of Irish background. All three young men who have been wanted by foreign authorities in connection with the killing on the weekend of a university professor are now in police custody in Manhattan. Eight. You know, you can't keep me here forever. They're looking for me. Who's looking for you? My grandmother. <laughs> in England? She lives here. Really? In America. In Rhinecliff. Yeah. What's this about your grandmother, then? She's very rich. She'll have me found. <laughs> Not all the girl in the world's gonna find you here, pal. I left a cassette, like a diary, saying where I was going and who I was meeting. You did what? It's true. Yeah, where is this cassette? It's in a writing desk in my bedroom. Under a sort of secret panel. You lift it up. Yeah, you're bullshitting me. You don't believe me? There was an item on the radio this morning about me. Missing persons. Yeah, hello, this is Sergeant O'Brien, 68 Squad. Can you do me a favor and check a listing for me? You got someone reported from Ryan Cliff, New York? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, thank you. Well, it's true that some kids disappeared, but it's not you. His name was Smith. And that's me, Leo Smith. I just made up the Fred bit. I got the idea from you, Mr. Stevens. Look, if you let me go, I'll go to the police. I'll tell them I took a vacation. Why are you telling me this? Why don't I just wait till they come in and arrest me? Because they might not find the tape for days. And I can't take much more of this. I've
thought this would be a game. What's your grandmother's name? Archel Smith. Marguerite Archel Smith. You know what I'm going to do, don't you? No, you can't. I gave you a chance. I said I gave you a chance. No! Police Department. I called before. Is Mrs. Smith in? Come in. Sit anywhere you like. That's uh, Leo's grandfather, Lieutenant. My late husband. Excuse me for keeping you waiting, Lieutenant. I'm Margaret Archel Smith. Oh, how do you do? Please. Uh, do sit down. <clears throat> I'm sorry to trouble you like this. Oh, I love to meet people. It's a shame we have to sit in here, but I'm having the place redecorated. Yeah, I guess. I'm lying. I'm afraid it's always been like this. It's really a mess, isn't it? Well. So, um, you think you might have found a trace of Leo in New York? I'm sorry, no. But we would like to know more about Leo. Something about his habits. Would it be all right if I took a look at Leo's room? Of course, we do whatever you please, Lieutenant. But I'd be very grateful if you don't ask me to take you there. Uh, there are things in that room that I prefer not to see. When you get to the head of the stairs, turn left. It's the last room at the end of the corridor. Thank you. 
Did you find anything? No. Fortunately. I'd like to ask you one more thing. What's this story about Leo confessing to some crime that he committed? Didn't your uh, colleagues tell you about that? Yeah. Sure, but only the broad outlines of the case. And I thought you might have something, something else to add to it. Would you mind? Sure. I told you, Lieutenant, that Leo is a silly boy. <laughs> Probably be president one day. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a few years ago, soon after his parents died, they were killed in a terrible automobile accident in England. Probably drunk. Leo had no other relatives, so I brought him here. I guess he didn't realize he was going to be very rich. When he did, he got it into his head that the money was cursed, that he would have to atone for the sin of inheriting that money. Now, that is silly, isn't it, Lieutenant? Or maybe... Maybe it was the other way around. Maybe Leo had a passion for punishment and had to justify it in some way. A girl was raped and brutally beaten near here. Leo went to the police and said that he did it. Did he? Oh, no, Leo didn't do it. It became obvious that after a couple of days. He just said he did it because he wanted to know what it felt like to be guilty. I see. Now he has this absurd obsession about the police. Some book he read uh, claimed that the police create disorder, not order. That, that they inspire us to commit crimes so that we can be punished for them, or some such rubbish. You wouldn't remember who wrote that book, would you? No. But I do remember it was by a woman, regrettably. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Smith. You've been very helpful. Please, please try to find Leo. We will. Find someone who'll take my sins upon his shoulders. Find someone who... His real name is Fred O'Connor. I'd like to introduce him to Grandmother. I'm sure she'd like him. Leo. Hey. Hey. I met your grandmother. Housekeeper. Wake up. Is this your mother and father, Leo? You think you've won, don't you? What did you do that for? I said, just want to talk to you about your mother and father. Huh? <clears throat> don't do that. Still right there. What are you doing? You evil son of a bitch. You can't treat people like animals now in time. Put the gun away. I'm not fooling around now in time. What for? Give me a chance to explain what happened. What for? Because you're going to let him go. Now time, get moving. No, we can't let him go. Wait a second. Oh, yes, we can. The guy's been following me around. He's some kind of a nut. Yeah, I know. I've heard that before, now in time. He'll go to the police, Bob. How could you do it? Huh? 
The fucking guy's been following me around. I don't know what the fuck he you wants in my life. He's on time! What the fuck is wrong with you? I'll tell him! I'll go to the police! You want to give up everything for this mutt? Is that what you want? You'd have killed him, wouldn't you? The fuck is wrong with you? I would have killed him! He couldn't have killed me. He hasn't got the guts. <laughs> All right, get up, Bob. Christ, have you killed him? No. And I'm not going to. The cop killer is. The cop killer. And why not, may I ask? I can't. But you're the cop killer, you said. So why can't you? After what, one more, one less? What's, what's the difference? I can't. I just can't kill him. We're gonna take a little drive. And you are going to kill him! How? Like the others. I can't. I can't. I'll count to five. One. Two. Three. I can't. I've never killed anyone. I'll shoot if you don't do it. And if I do? You can go. You're free. And now?
I'm not armed. Nobody's seen me. I thought it best to come back. If they'd have caught me, I might have told them everything. I did right, didn't I? Done it if I hadn't forced you to. But I'm responsible for the others. You kill any of us. No, I didn't. I didn't. News time is 8 o'clock. In less than 48 hours from the discovery of the body of Detective Bob Corvo in Central Park, the investigations into this new murder reveal certain factors which are more than ever disturbing. Police Department spokesman Arthur E. Barnes has commented, there are aspects of this latest killing in Central Park that baffle the Homicide Division. It appears that more than one person may have been involved. A resident of the fashionable neighborhood who was out walking his dog and prefers to remain anonymous said he saw what he described only as a youngish looking man running out of Central Park as if being chased. Moreover, the public and press posed the question of what Detective Corvo was... Shouldn't you be going to the office? Of course. Aren't you going to work? I'll call in sick. I lied to you. You didn't kill Bob. He was already dead. In a press conference Tuesday, New York City Police Department... He was dead in the bathroom. You can go. About you calling in sick, I don't think that's a very good idea. Why? Well, they might get suspicious. Do you think they suspect me? They might. But don't worry. You're safe as long as I stay here. You should do what I say. Go to work. Hold on, I'll switch to narcotics. I call later. Thank you. What's wrong, you know? Tell me, Fred. Tell me how it started. How do things start? They start... <clears throat> they start at the beginning. You grow up. You grow up and you have an idea, you want, you want things to be a certain way. You have, you have dreams. Go on. I'm going on. You, you expect things to... to expect them to, to, have a, to have a structure, an order. Tell me about this place. Tell me about you and Bob. Bob. Ah. He, he 
couldn't understand, but <clears throat> he didn't know what is corruption, what is corrupt and what isn't corrupt. He, to do nothing, that's, that's corrupt. To do nothing, to do nothing is corrupt. Yes. Yes, to do nothing, it's weak to do nothing. What do you do if someone is a, if someone is a drug addict, if someone, uh, if someone is underprivileged, they come from a poor neighbor, from a poor family, okay, what are you supposed to say, okay? You're a drug addict, I understand, you're a mugger, I understand. Here's a gun, go out and mug somebody. Go kill an old lady, go kill an old man, take their money. We know that you need it. Is that right? Something's got to be done about those people, you must. You must do something about them. I know. I believe you. Pop didn't understand that. You must... There are people who are weak. And if they're too weak to cope with reality, then they have to go under. It's the law of nature. You can't let the weak people take over. Let's see if there's any mail. Have a good trip. O'Connor! You're not really the same person at all, are you? You've fallen to pieces. Isn't that why you came back? To see me fall to pieces?
I got your message. My God, you look like a ghost. I've been sick. Come in. Too many things just don't fit. The day when we went to the country, there was something on the radio. I wasn't listening. But Bob, there was something that disturbed him. And why was Bob always talking about you? I didn't know he was. He worried about you. Bob worried about everyone. But why about you? You were not gay, were you? Sometimes I used to think that the two of you... No. It's not you. Not me what? It's not you, the cop killer. Is it? Why are you always so fucking rude, Lenora? Mad! Mad! Why the hell did you go and see her? It would have made her suspicious if I hadn't. Crap! By going, you've made her suspicious. I didn't say a thing. You don't need to. I can see it in your face. You just need to confess. Did you go out? And why the hell shouldn't I? Because someone might fucking see you. No one's seen me. What do you expect me to do? Stay here all day on my own? What'd you buy? Just a few things. By the way, I think we should get a television. Why? Why not? Shaved. I'm going out. Going where? To the precinct. Oh, really? How about a cup of coffee? Can I give you a hand? Better yourself. Yeah? 
Just trying not to think. I just want to keep my head empty. I suppose your taste in music hasn't improved. <laughs> oh, sit. I wanted to talk to you about what you were talking about the other day. No, not now. Want to have dinner with me tonight? Sure. But where? Where were you sick? You can ask for a fork. No, I'll manage. You know, I do believe you have changed. Yeah? How? I don't know. You are less gross than you used to be. Almost human. You don't like it? <laughs> Eat some rice. About Bob. You know... Me and him. I don't want to talk about Bob. I'm going to write a book about all this. Try to keep him alive. I was talking to some old woman the other day who read your last book. <laughs> yeah? About the police? Yeah. <laughs> and what did she say? I thought it was crap. the way to become a statistic. O'Connor. Had a nice time with pretty Lenore. How do you know? You must make a lovely couple. Hey! Some details on the Wall Street activity, the Dow Jones Industrial Average at the closing, down 1.81, standing now at 829.43, on record volume, 
132,600,000. You were saying? Don't worry, I didn't tell her anything. <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> not me. What the hell are you laughing at? I was wondering when you're going to say something to her. And you will. Because you want to confess. You feel guilty. And once you have talked to her, you'll have to kill her too. If you kill her, I'll go. You'll never see me again. I'm offering you freedom. Freedom, Fred. Why? Why what? Why do you want me to kill her? I don't want you to kill her. You just have to. I've been thinking. I want to go home. I want to lead a normal life, take care of my money. And that woman's a danger. You'll start by telling her a little. Then you'll tell her more. And then you'll tell her everything. You have to kill her. Why don't you kill her? Well, I've never killed anyone. Remember? And if I don't? Then I'll stay. How do you think I should kill her? Let's just go through it once more. You put the gun in her hand, you make it look like she shot herself. First wiped off my fingerprints. And then? Listen, I'm not an amateur, you know. Well, you weren't so fucking brilliant in the park when you tried to kill me, were you? Fred! Better get your act together. It's nearly five. Fred? Pouring one of your suits. Fred? Can you hear me? See you for a minute.
take it. It's Bob's. How oh, did you get it? He left it. He left it in our apartment. In your apartment? Yeah. I was. Can we, can we go outside and get some air? I, I need some air. Please. Hello? Hello? rather not tell you. I mean, you can go to the police now if you like. But all you're going to do is cover Bob's name as shit. Mine too, of course. I'm going to get rid of the apartment. I'm going to quit the police. Just tell me one thing. Is the apartment near Central Park where Bob was killed? No. Who's been here? Who's been here? In the cupboard, over there. That's where he keeps them. Set him free.
set him free. near the park where Bob was killed. And who is he? Is there a connection between him and Bob's death? And Bob's death? He's the cop killer. He killed your husband. I found out about this place by accident. He was planning to kill you too. Is it true, Fred? Fred, I asked you! Fred! He's crazy. The man's mad. You better go call the police. Where is the phone? He cut the wires. When he realized I found you, he'll have to go downstairs. Give me the gun. I'll take care of him. you who said I wasn't. The first time I saw you, I knew you'd confess for me. I know about guilt, Fred. Poor, innocent Fred. I'm not innocent. You are. I killed Bob. He was still alive in the park. Are these elevators working? They were working. Are there any other elevators on this floor? No. Screw it. Let's take the stairs. We've got to hurry, Fred. We don't want to go to prison. Take it. Come on, Fred. your turn now. You're the cop killer. Take it, Fred. Take it, Fred. You're the cop killer now, Fred. You. You're the killer. You, Fred. You. You're the killer. 
killer. You, Fred. You. You, Fred. Change your mind. 